Welcome to the Motorcycle Tech and Travel Channel in my shop. The riding season is about to begin and there's plenty of riding and filming ahead. I'll be sharing high altitude adventures and traveling long distances on the Honda XR650R. The engine is carbureted and this will require main and pilot jet changes. A motorcycle slide carburetor has mechanical fixed fuel flow. Fixed jet size determines the fuel flow and whether the mixture is correct, lean, or rich at each throttle opening. Optimal mix is always the goal. By contrast, for late EFI engines, an oxygen sensor and computer constantly regulate the air-fuel ratio. There are no fixed jets to change and no need to correct for altitude changes. For motorcycle carburetors, there is a formula for jetting an altitude. This official Honda chart shows a difference in jetting at various altitudes. The chart is a place to start. Factors like atmosphere, humidity, air density, and filtration media also play a role. Other approaches include the 3% rule. For each 3,000 feet of elevation gain, the carburetor needs a 3% leaner set of jets. This is approximately 1% leaner for each 1,000 feet of elevation gain. The rule is merely a place to start. One way I've compensated for slightly rich mixture has been the Polestar spark plug. These plugs can fire through the richer mix. The engine is still running rich and if extreme can wash down cylinder walls or build up carbon. An example of an acceptable enrichment level is a channel feature video on the El Dorado Canyon Trail and crossing Sunrise Pass, ranging between 4,500 and 7,000 feet elevation. In that run, I am jetted for approximately 2,000 feet elevation, yet the engine tolerated single track crawling above 6,500 feet without difficulty. There are actually advantages of slightly rich running. Slight enrichment helps cool the upper cylinder. The downside in general is that rich mixtures waste fuel, foul spark plugs, and build up carbon. If extreme, raw fuel washes cylinders and dilutes vital oil. This can cause piston ring and cylinder wall damage and even piston seizure. Running lean, on the other hand, raises cylinder temps, causes misfire, and at worst can burn valves and piston crowns. On two strokes, Lean jetting and poor oil mixtures seize pistons. Reading spark plugs is the final check for richer lean running. This is a traditional method. Testing the main jet requires running the engine under open throttle then shutting down abruptly. The spark plug will show the burn state. Light brown, brown to even light gray is acceptable. Black or sooty is clearly unacceptably rich. Over time or after a lengthy cruise speed run, the tailpipe residue is also a good indicator. Here, the XR650R tailpipe shows a chronically rich air-fuel mixture. The rich spark plug is clear after highway cruise. Though not enough enrichment to dilute the cylinder wall oil, this mixture is wasting fuel. And this is at 4,200 feet elevation. It's time for rejetting. Too lean is a concern, but Honda gave us a lot of room here. The XR650R OEM jetting for U.S. emissions was an ultra-lean 112 main jet and a 65 slower pilot jet. However, my XR650R is uncorked, much like European and Australian models that came stock with a 175 main and 65 pilot jet at sea level. Here, I am running a 172 main jet with a 68 slow jet at our local 4200 feet. This 68 or a 68S pilot or slow jet is popular for uncorked U.S. models. The needle is on the third clip groove, like stock. While this jetting has been tolerated to 7,000 feet elevation with a Polestar spark plug, it's way too rich. Changing to a 165 main jet and 65 pilot jet should remedy that issue, allowing both lower and higher altitude tolerance. A 65 jet is stock for sea level on European and Australian models that are factory uncorked. So let's change and test the new jets on the key and PE carburetor. But before that, we'll confirm the overall condition of the engine and adjust the valves. A new Polestar spark plug will be installed for testing and summer tune. 
I always carry a spare spark plug in the backcountry, and this cycle is no exception. I begin with a diagnostic tune-up that starts with a valve adjustment and a cylinder leak down test. This is at the top of the compression stroke with all four valves loose. I'm running a cylinder leak down test and want the piston to remain at top dead center during this test. This is a routine valve adjustment. I've done a video on this that's available at Motorcycle Tech and Travel channel. Minimal adjustment indicates the valves and valve seats are in excellent condition. My snap-on leak detector wants 60 to 65 PSI setting to pressurize the cylinder. I've had the snap-on tool, the MT324, for over 40 years. This is remarkably good seal at 8 to 10 percentage leak. Shown here is the time cert insert that replaced the original alloy spark plug threads. I use this Iridium NGK spark plug to test the jetting. There was a clear indication of an overrich mixture. I've used Polestar spark plugs to help compensate around altitude and jetting. Pre-gapped at the 39 thousandths, these plugs will fire through a reasonably rich mix and fire completely. This prevents fuel washing of the cylinders and helps compensate for altitude without a mandatory change of jetting. This is a large PE series key and carburetor. It's a slide type carburetor that requires fixed jet changes for altitude. Jets can be changed with a carburetor in place by removing the float bowl. Better yet, changing the main jet is not difficult. It begins by removing the plug on the bottom of the carburetor float bowl. The carburetor has been completely drained. The tank is removed. While you can use a socket and ratchet quarter inch drive, in this case, this six millimeter tool is available from Tusk. The tool is really handy. And this is the removal of the 172 main jet. That jet will be replaced with a 165 main jet. And in this case, we will use a new one. I put together my own motorcycle carburetor and jet kit for both Makuni and Kian carburetors. The kit consists of the cleaning wires for the jets if you're reusing them. And this is very handy. When you do clean jets, be careful not to remove any material. If you remove material, you're actually increasing the jet size. So be careful about that. This tool is handy for removing the float bowl plug and can be carried in your onboard tool kit. I'll be installing a new pilot jet. I'm going to install a 65 pilot and a 165 main jet. The main jet again would be very simple. We'd be on the home stretch now, merely installing the new main jet, carefully making sure that the baffle is in place inside the bowl. And beyond that, we would be done. Put the plug back on the bottom and this chore would be over. On the other hand, I'm replacing the pilot and the pilot or slow jet requires removal of the float bowl on this style carburetor. For easier access, I've loosened the screws for the clamps on the induction manifold and also the air filter end to be able to tilt the carburetor carefully and gain some space for accessing these screws and making this more visible. I push in on the screw head with these Phillips screws while rotating it to keep from stripping the head out.
it shouldn't take an impact driver to remove these screws. If there's any wear on this O-ring, replace it. I rebuilt this carburetor at fairly recent points, so the gasket should still be intact and can be reused. This fourth screw has the retainer for the hose. And again, this gasket is intact and can be reused. Keep it clean. On this PE carburetor, the pilot or slow jet is offset here, and it's puzzling why Kian did not make a provision for removing and replacing the pilot jet without removing the float bowl. This is the 68 pilot jet, and we're replacing it with a 65 jet. These are identical except for the bore size. Before installing the new pilot, and always confirm the jet size is on the side of the pilot, I blow out the passageway with compressed air. Be very careful the threads on the pilot or slow jet are brass, and the carburetor body itself is a pot metal. Make sure the jet is seated. We can now put the baffle and the 165 main jet in place before putting the float bowl back in position. And again, this is the new jet. Verify that it's a 165. The number is on the end of the jet. And blow that passageway out as well. Be very careful with the needle. Don't damage the end of the needle when putting the pilot in position. And don't forget the baffle. And we'll use the Tusk 6 millimeter tool. If you're concerned about the needle, open the throttle. Make sure that the jet is seated and that the throttle opens and closes freely. This needle and seat were new when I rebuilt the carburetor, so I'm not concerned about that, and there's been no seepage of fuel around the bowl. I will check this with a clear tube test. You will find video coverage of the clear tube method at the channel. And again, this gasket is in fine shape, otherwise I would be replacing it. This can be done in the field, although I would suggest that the pilot should always be close to right so you don't have to drop the bowl by your campsite. Make sure the pivot pin for the float is in position before attempting to put the bowl back on, especially with a carburetor on an angle like this. This tube goes on this side of the baffle. Once the bowl is squarely in position, the gasket is flat, the pin is in the float, and this has been secured. You can rotate the carburetor back to the point that the indexing mark on the carburetor aligns with the forked notch on the intake manifold. And then tighten the screws. These screws can be tightened evenly and in cross, the four screws holding the bowl on. The plug is put back in position with either the tusk wrench or box end wrench. Make sure the carburetor is completely level before tightening the clamps. Make sure that the float bowl screws include the screw that holds the alignment retainer for the hose. Account for all of the hoses. Make sure that they are back in position. None are open to atmosphere that shouldn't be. Tighten these screws. 
Tighten the screw that holds this bracket on. All four of these screws in cross to about 1.4 pound feet. That's plenty. Be certain that these clamps are secure. They must be dust proof for off-road riding. And they should be checked periodically to be certain they're snug. Don't forget the screw on the clamp for the air box side. If you're careful, there's no reason that the float level should change, but we will check it with a clear tube test. Check your linkages. Make sure that the fuel hoses are ready to go back into position. Clamps accounted for. If you're having difficulty accounting for hoses, the factory workshop manual does have vacuum and fuel line diagrams. The idle air mixture screw will likely require a slight adjustment with this jet change. There is a factory procedure for adjusting the idle air mixture and the idle speed. See the factory workshop manual. Well that wraps up the carburetor rejetting. Assuming that a 175 main jet would be appropriate for sea level, a 165 main jet now has this engine running optimally at around 5,000 feet elevation, 1,500 meters, and ambient temperature of 100 degrees. That would pretty much sum up our high desert country locally, and I know that I can go down closer to sea level without damaging the engine. So we'll give this a test and see how it does. I'll be watching the tailpipe and the spark plug, and the goal is maximum fuel efficiency and the ability to go to at least 7,500 to 8,000 feet elevation without an issue. Ambient temperature is also a factor for altitude jet adjustment. The hotter, the leaner, the cooler, the richer. So bear that in mind when you're making jet adjustments. Know the humidity, air density, airflow from the air filtration media, and ambient temperature.